What's up my lovely people on the internet? This is Phil the Woods and today I'm doing a video that I wanted to do since a long time and I wanted to make sure I was doing it before upgrading to the road love that I have right now. But today I'm doing the tour of my first Dodge Caravan setup. Let's get to it. first reason why I wanted to do this video is that first of all I love making videos second of all when I was looking for some YouTube videos about Dodge Caravan setup or DIY Dodge Caravan I couldn't really find what I was looking for and I just told myself if I'm going into this minivan life I'm gonna try to uh, one day make the kind of videos that I would have loved to watch when I was uh, building my own setup Another reason why I wanted to do this video is that I want to help people if they want to build something very simple and cheap. Maybe they are thinking about buying a minivan or a Dodge Caravan or anything. I want to help them and I want to make sure uh, they try this lifestyle because for me myself, I'm personally more uh, like a weekender. I never go for more than maybe 10 days in a row. So I'm not a full timer. So this setup is designed with that in mind and it's very simple. You can build it yourself if you want. Uh, maybe I'm going to do another video about the build of it. But uh, for now, you can inspire yourself from it uh, because it's very simple. And yes, you can do it without spending a lot of money. I mean, I think I didn't spend much more than 150 bucks for all the woods and stuff that I needed for the build and maybe I bought for a thousand and five hundred bucks of many different other things you kind of need when you go uh, on a van life trip like that. I mean, you're probably going to need a cooler and uh, a power source and a lot of knickknacks that I'm going to tell you in this video. Another thing that I did on this platform because I wanted to use it for my carpenter car is that I glued some vinyl flooring on the top of the plywood sheet because I wanted to protect this plywood sheet from my big box of tools or any materials that could hurt the plywood. Hurt, can I say that? Can it hurt? Anyway, if you don't need it as a carpenter car, I wouldn't suggest to put vinyl or any kind of flooring on this. I would only suggest to put maybe a varnish, uh, a water-based varnish. So you make sure you product it, uh, not with some flooring because it adds some weight. And when you want to take it off of the van, you want it to be as light as possible. Another thing about this design is that it's designed for two adults and one big dog uh, to go in long road trips. So if you're building a Dodge Caravan setup uh, for only one person, it's a good setup. But uh, I just wanted to tell you that it was designed for two people. So me, uh, my girlfriend and my dog Lou. And yeah, talking about Lou, I'm also going to talk about the platform I built for my dog Lou that I installed on the passenger seat so she can have a very big bed and she can be as comfortable as us, I think. So as quickly as possible, the way I built this is that I took a 4x8 sheet of plywood and I chose the height of the platform according to the cooler I was about to buy. So everything was designed around the height of the cooler I was putting in the big storage hole there is when you take out the back seat. So I measured this and I wanted to build a platform at this height. So I measure the corner and I cut uh, the sheet to make sure the sheet can go in at this height and I can close the back door. And I really wanted to build the biggest platform as possible. So when the doors are closed and my tools are there, there's no holes or nothing. So when I chose the height, I knew that I wanted two pair of hinges so uh, the plywood could bend on this side. So on one side, it will on the back side, it will be my kitchen setup. And on the other side, if I wanted, I could flip this part over. Uh, remove the removable legs and have access to this old storage in the van every seat every back seat are removed and also took off the kind of it's the cap for the front seat when they are stored in the floor so i removed everything 
to make a big, big storage holes under the platform to store everything I need. And I'm talking about my blow up boat and a lot of things that I don't use every day, but it's there if I need it. So when the platform is in bed mode, I want it to be as solid as possible because I'm kind of a big guy, but I knew my tools can be way heavier than myself and my girlfriend combined. I chose to put six legs under the middle platform and then two more legs for the two sides that flips in and out. So there is 10 legs, but I don't think you have to really put as much legs if you don't need to put some tools on it. But when I figured out where to place the legs, I used some 4x4 and I really put the leg at the best place I thought. And then I screwed it on the platform and it was very simple to build. But of course, I'm a carpenter. It might be a little more easier for me than for you if you're not a carpenter. But believe me, it's totally makeable. You can do it. Another really good thing about this minivan life is that it makes the van life very accessible and just like me I spent maybe $10,000 on this whole setup I have and it's way less expensive than any sprinter setup that you could do and also you're not gonna have to spend a lot of money on gas so uh, whenever you're ready to go on the road <laughs> you can go on the biggest road trip possible and you still only have a minivan, so it's very cheap on gas. So that's a very good thing too. And also, like I said at the beginning, you can use it for your day-to-day -day cars. So you have only one car that does everything. And I just think it's a very environmental friendly approach to the van life. Yeah, that's my thought about it. So now let's talk a little more in details about the whole setup, starting with the kitchen. So in the kitchen, when you lift the plywood, you have two hinges that, that are kind of right where the big storage hole starts. And you can almost lift it to 90 degrees and then you can have access to the whole storage very easily. And then the two big legs you see in the middle, I chose some 2x8s because again, I wanted to make sure it's very solid. And all I have to do when I put it back in bed mode is that I have to make sure that there is a hinge and a half space at the end of the storage so the legs can go there and the platform can be even all the way. So to hold this in place, I use some very solid uh, two pieces of Hulk, I think. I use it like two legs that are going right down the kind of plastic stopper there is on each side of the rear door. And then I screwed some hook stopper to make sure it kind of stops the legs at the right place and then everything holds in place. And you can even use it uh, like a couch inside of it. So when it's rainy or for whatever reason you want to go inside the van, you can leave it like that and use it uh, like a couch. So what's inside the kitchen now? There is a couple of things. There is my old barbecue that I have since probably 10 years now and it still works. I have a 12 volt cooler. I think it's a, it's Coolatron, the brand, and it costs maybe 150 bucks. So it's very cheap. And then I have four plastic bins. It's all for the kitchen. In the first one, I have some spices, uh, some tea, some coffee, what I need for the coffee and all that kind of stuff. In the other one, it's a bigger one. I have all the dishes. I have a cutting board. I have some, some glass. I have the utensil. I, I've got pretty much everything else I need for the kitchen. And then, in the other one, the one that is uh, in the back that I don't go there too often, is everything I need to do the dishes. So I have a retractable sink and of course I have my biodegradable soap for the dishes and a couple of things I don't really use a lot. So just about this cooler, it's a very cheap way to buy a cooler that's work on 12 volt. But the thing is, it's not a fridge, it's a cooler. And that's why it's a lot cheaper than a real 12 volt fridge. I mean, I think the cheaper 12 volt fridge you can buy on the market will be a thousand dollar. And this fridge, this cooler is 150 bucks. So uh, there is some downside of it. The first one will be that I cannot plug it inside the Anton 500 battery I have because it's gonna spend too much energy. So I'm only plugging it when I'm on the road. So when the car is started 
and I use some ice in the bottom of it to make sure I can keep everything cool. But uh, for example, when I go on trips, I put some ices there and I change it every two or two and a half days. So it's kind of good. And then what I do, a little trick tip I have is that I buy a Coleman blue cooler that I put in between the two uh, front seat. It's the cooler only for the beverage, the cold beverage. So I put every beverage in there and then I put another bag of ice inside the cooler. But the thing is, because I don't often open the, the 12 volt fridge because the beverage are not there, I don't open it a lot and that's why it kind of keeps it cool a long time with just ice and I can save myself buying a very expensive 12 volt fridge. So I think it's a very good uh, compromise you can do by uh, putting every beverage in another cooler and then I have another cooler for all the dry stuff. So I have three cooler. So for example, when I go on long road trips and I leave home, I right away I go to the grocery stores and I have some food for at least six or seven days and then I buy two bag of ice. I just have to manage the bag of ices but pretty much I have everything I need and I'm pretty much off the grid. So the food management is very simple like that. One cooler for the beverage, one for the cold things and one for the dry things. Another thing that I like that I just pretty much just did, uh, I mean I have this set up since almost three years and I did this shelf uh, only at the end of the last year and I use it every day. I always set up this small shelf and on this I can have for example a place where I do the coffee in the morning without having to take the whole barbecue out. So yeah maybe the small shelf is a little harder to build uh, because you have to figure out the right angle and you have to make sure you glue the two pieces very well together. But yeah, if you're building this setup, I'm telling you this small shelf is very useful. Another very useful thing that there is in this kitchen setup is the metal wire I put all the way on the top of it. And on this wire, I hang a lot of things like the emergency kits, uh, some knife, uh, my Bluetooth speaker, what else? There is always some Scott towels on it and there is different things that are very easily accessible. So when I want it quick, I can get it. The last great thing about this kitchen setup is that when you lift it up, I pretty much leave it like that the whole day because I can still see through the, the back glass when I'm driving because on this uh, 2010 Dodge Caravan, there's no back camera. So I really need to see. So I leave it like that. And when I'm on the road and I go to the grocery stores, I have access to the whole kitchen very fast and I don't have to do any manipulation to access everything in there. Now the bedroom. So of course the bedroom is in the middle part of the van. First of all the mattress. The mattress I bought it for 40 bucks on marketplace. It was very cheap. I know you can buy some new one but keep an eye open. You can have some really good deal on used mattress. And then under the bed you have a whole lot of storage. So that's where I will store uh, the camping chair, for example, the, my blow-up boat, the, the Reflectix, uh, some food for my dogs. And the thing that I use every day, I'm going to put it probably on top of it so I can have easy access. And in the bottom will be things that I don't use every day. There is another thing I did that I think is very useful in this van is that when you open the side doors, there is usually some handles right there on top i remove those handles and i make sure i'm keeping it if i need to put them back but i remove them and i use the two same holes to install some two pieces of wood uh, with the two same holes and then on there i install some hooks and i leave some place to install a 12 volt fan I didn't do it yet because I didn't have the time, but I'm probably going to do it soon because I'm always looking for a new place to put the fan uh, when I need it during the night. So I think it's a good place to put some hooks. Be creative if you do it. Uh, it's just a thing you can do. 
And then another very useful thing we have is that we have two clotheslines. We can set up very quick. So whenever we go on quick swim on the road and our towels or anything we have to dry up can dry when we're on the road. And now the lights. We have a very small LED light that is USB rechargeable. So it's very useful just for that. Uh, there is also a mosquito killer built in this light and it's believe me really working well and that's one of the things i have and this little thing right here uh, to deal with the mosquitoes and i think without having some big screen setup or anything i handle it very well and i'm not a mosquito fan at all so uh, this light it cost maybe 35 dollars on amazon this thing here is a thermocell it works with uh, butane gas and then i think it costs maybe 40 bucks so how it works is that there is a little heater inside of here and it kind of uh, heat this little piece of blue thing i don't know what it is but it's very helping a lot to scare the mosquito away so for the clothes management what we do is that when we go on trips uh, we bring a bag of clothes of course that we put at the end of the platform right behind the front seat so we always have our clothes there and then when we do the setup for the dog uh, we put it's kind of a protective blanket for dogs we put it on top of the clothes bag on top of the pillows and we kind of wrap the pillow in it and it makes a very big bed for the dogs and honestly it works very well with the dog hair because i don't know why but the dog hair kind of stick to the blanket and on every pit stop i put out the blanket i shake it outside a little bit and we're good to go without having too much dog hair but of course if you uh, go on road trip with a dog you are sure gonna have some dog hair inside the van but i have a husky and honestly it very looks like her dog hair are not attached to her it's kind of floating on her i think she's losing so much hair and it's not that bad inside the van i'm very surprised with this technique and with the blanket and of course i have a little broom that i use pretty much every day to help to remove some dog hair but honestly it's not that bad real quick talking about the dog so for the dog i have this blanket that i set up i have a small dog bed that i roll up and put inside the blue bag it's kind of a camping dog bed and then I built a platform just for her. So this platform is designed to fit perfectly inside the area where the front seat is, the passenger seat. So when I arrive on the campsite or whatever boondocking spot I'm in, I kind of right away set up the bed platform for the dog and the dog bed, and then she have her own space. And also for the venting, what I do, for her and for me, I have some screens uh, that I set up on top of the front seat windows. So I have two of them and I can open the glass a little bit and I can also make sure uh, that the mosquito won't come in and some air is probably going to come in. And honestly, uh, it works pretty well. And with the 12 volt fan, that's pretty much all I do for venting. And when it's too hot, I have a tent that I'm that you can see right now. This tent is set in five minute maximum, and it it helps a lot with the venting because it's kind of like a tent. So I have a big screen like on a tent, and I can let the back door open, and there is plenty of air that's coming in. But I'm only installing this when it's too sunny and there is really no shading at all for me and my dog and also when it's too hot during the night. One thing that I wanted to make sure I don't forget to tell you is about uh, the deflector we install on top of the front window. I'm not sure it's called a deflector in English but anyway you stick that on top of the window so the water won't be able to come inside the van really easily so you can open the window and whenever it's raining during the night you can still open the window without having to deal with water inside of the van. So if you're going into the minivan life, it's one of the first thing I suggest you to buy. And now, how I deal with the sun and the privacy or what I use for curtains. 
I use a lot of different things and it's uh, with some advice from my friends uh, at Road Bluff. But the first thing we did, we did like they did, we did some DIY curtains that was hanging with some clips. It was good, but not as good as the Reflectix we have now. So maybe two years after that, two years of using the whole curtains, we switched to the Reflectix. We also bought that from Road Luff, and it was not very expensive for what it does, but we have one for the seven windows, seven windows we have inside the van and it fits perfectly well inside each glass and I think it's laser cut so it fits very well so it block all the lights coming in and also it reflects the sunlight so in the morning it's a lot cooler inside the van so whenever I want to get up even if I want to wake up at 10 o'clock it's gonna be very dark and cool inside the van until I get up and then for the power setup I use a name Tom 500 watts uh, battery it's a lithium ion it works very very well because it's very powerful it's very light and it's easy to charge and you can charge it very fast when you're connected on 110 volts i use it for a lot of different things all the electronics uh, the drone uh, the camera and everything i charge it with that but yeah if you're not a digital nomad and you don't have a lot of things to recharge I wouldn't suggest to buy this because it's very expensive but there is some smaller battery that, that you can buy if you have maybe an iPad and your computer that you want to charge. I wouldn't suggest to use too much the battery of the car. In fact, you're not supposed to charge anything with the battery of the car when the car is not running. So if you want to charge your iPad or iPhone or a small camera, I would suggest you to buy a lithium ion battery like this one, like the Anthem, and also the Anthem have a smaller one, so I think it's 300 watts. So I would really suggest to have a smaller battery or at least a small battery for power backup like I have. Okay, so I think the video was long enough. I really hope you liked this video more in depth with a lot of details of the minivan I have. And yeah, I wanted to do this tour because now I'm, I did upgrade to the Road Loft. Road Loft is a company that does Dodge Caravan and minivan setup. I'm gonna talk about that in another video, but I wanted to make sure I do the tour. And if you have any question about this setup or any question about the minivan life, don't be shy, ask me. So I really hope you had a great day and I hope you're also gonna have a good night. Take care, goodbye.